Hello ladies and gentlemen, hello, hello, and welcome to my review of Night of Champions 2013. Now the only thing I'm going to talk about, I'm going to make this very short because it got me angry. Look, they did the vote during the night on who were the best champions in all the, all the, the belts. I had no problem with any of the champions. Sting is a US champion, I felt could have been the world champion. Booger T is a world champion. I didn't have that much of a problem with it. Hulk Hogan, of course. There ain't nobody who's better than him, brother. I don't care how much you love a Triple H or you love a John Cena. They ain't no better than the great and destructive power of a Hulk Hogan. And the reason I call him the destructive power, women fell by his knees. That's how much they loved him. But the one I call shenanigans on is the, the tag championships. DX. Seriously, could have came in second easily. They're a great tag team. And they could have came in third. Let the Hart Foundation have the second slot. Hell, let the bullet British Bulldogs have the second slot. DX first? Bullshit! Uh-uh. I don't give a fuck who you are. If you don't believe Animal and Hawk with luscious Paul Ellery, I know it's precious Paul Ellery. I said luscious. Because he made them work so well. They deserved that position. But they came in second. Bullshit. I want to get that out of the way because it got on my nerves. Now, here's the show. I was very surprised that they announced that the other titles that weren't talked about on the website, which is U.S., the IC and the Tag Championship were going to be contested there. I really felt that it could have been could have been one thing, but actually I think it's the other. They did this because they wanted people to be surprised. But to be honest, I really feel that's kind of like sloppy work. Because it would have been better for them to actually announce it ahead of time and then put it on the website. By doing it like that as a surprise really didn't feel me very good. Even though Triple H explained it, somewhat in the, the beginning of the show I felt it just wasn't right now let's get to kick off over with with the tag championship now I said in my prediction that either the primetime players or the real Americans were going to be the ones that could win I wish the Usos could have won but I expected one of those two and when we saw at the end of the turmoil match we had the primetime players versus real Americans and Daring Young was the one who got the win over Jack Swagger I was happy about it. Finding out the match was later in the night, I'm going like, oh, this is going to be good. I want to see the primetime players win like everybody else did as well. But when it came to the match, I had to think about this a little bit. When the match was going on, because I had to think, are they really going to drop the straps to the guys right now when Triple H is the bosses of the, uh, basically of the Shield? The Shield had no direction for quite a long time, and now they have a direction as a muscle man for God himself, Triple H. So seeing this made me think, you know what? These guys are not going to drop it. As much as if they do, I'm happy. But then what would this mean for Triple H? He'll be having muscle men that, the muscle, but no titles to go with it. So I didn't expect them to lose. And I was right, they didn't, they didn't lose. But I did believe seeing this, that throughout the night, somebody had to drop one of their straps. And I'm talking about the shield. So when they said Dean Ambrose was going to face Dolph, I was going, are they really going to let Dolph win this? Dolph as a face could get over with this title. And when you saw the match, people really wanted him to win. They wanted him to get a table and throw Dean right through it. That's what they wanted most of the night because that was Detroit. But seeing that Dolph didn't win, even though it was a good match, throughout the night the matches were actually very good. Almost 90% of the matches were good. But seeing this, just, I didn't think Dean Ambrose really needed this title. Already having the prestige of being Triple H's muscle man, he wouldn't have been lost. In other words, he wouldn't have lost some cred by losing the title. It would have been better for Dolph to win it. But since he didn't win it, and this is just to make Dean look strong, like with Seth and Rollins, 
it, it, it really didn't make no sense. For me personally, I think one of those titles, the tag titles or the U.S. Championship should have been dropped. So I'm going to move on to the match between Fandango and The Miz. I want to get this over with quickly. The problem here is this with these two. It was great to have another mid-card feud. The problem for me is that no one ever left a message below in, the t in my comments telling me that these guys actually had time to talk against one another, trying to promote their feud. Now, I understand that something happened on SmackDown where The Miz dealt with, with Fandango while um, R-Truth was dealing with Fandango. But in this case, I think they needed a little more than that. I wouldn't have minded seeing The Miz dealing with Fandango and perpetuating it a little more, making something out of it. But when it came down to it, I just... I wasn't feeling it 100% between these two guys. They did a great match. It wasn't bad, but I felt that the feud itself was still lacking, and it wasn't enough for me personally. But The Miz did win, but the question is, did he win? I mean, he did something, but it just wasn't, it doesn't feel like there's enough there. He needs another opponent. He needs someone to give him a real feud he can put his teeth into. And you know what? I was wondering what was going on with The Miz. Says something was wrong with him while he was a face. And I finally realized it. It's his fucking haircut. Go back to the fucking Mohawk, Miz. Because you look better that way than having the, having the cut similar to Jack Swagger when he first... Right before he left. He had that little leave it to beaver type of haircut. That's what's throwing me off about him. So I'm moving on to the IC Championship. I'm going to get this done now because I'm doing CM Punk next. When you have the opening of the show with God himself, Triple H, it made sense. God is the one who promotes the show. God is the one who makes the show work. And he pretty much said, I'm putting out the best product there is. I'm very happy to be here and you're going to enjoy this. Are you ready? That was a good hyping. God always can know how to hype. It just counts if you're willing to take it. But seeing that Curtis Axel came out with the Paul Heyman to try and get his ass out of trouble. And that was trying to get his ass out of, the, out of the match. I wasn't really into it that much until Curtis Axel opened his mouth and pissed off the bear. As Triple H said, you know the old adage of poking the bear? Now you're gonna pay for it because now Every title is going to be contested and you guys are going to have to deal with it because the next person I see in the back, they're getting their shot. And who would he get? Kofi Kingston. I didn't expect Kofi to win here. This was just to make Curtis Axel more of a threat. And Paul didn't do too bad. Paulie did some decent fear, fear look in his face. But in the end, we know Curtis Axel wins. But you know what? It still accomplished what it needed to do. I was not bored with it. And when it came to the actual match, when they had the they had that little backstage with Curtis and what yeah, with Curtis and with Paul Heyman saying, I believe in you, but now you must believe in yourself. And saying, if you don't make sure I'm staying here, I'm gone was a very poignant thing to do. Because CM Punk wanted to kill his ass. And you saw this through the match. CM Punk versus Curtis Axel versus Paul Heyman in a elimination hand, uh, no, um, handcuff match. Um, they did not, they didn't do anything any different than any type of handicap match that's not, that's a DQ match. Non-disqualification. When it comes down to it, the, the kendo sticks, it's not something I haven't seen before. They did pretty good. And the thing that everybody was waiting for, and they were screaming and jizzing in their pants in the Detroit, Michigan, I don't know which arena is that. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. But you know what? Seeing that, oh, when Punk got his hands on Paul, the people were ready to rip, out of the, rip, rip the seats out. And when he started beating his ass, it, I, I enjoyed it. This feud was structured so well. That, and I believe the, the Sled Daddy said it right. It doesn't matter if CM Punk wins or loses. The feud has been built so well. If it continues, no one would be upset about it. If it went beyond 
the next pay-per-view, which is, what is it, Battleground, to Survivor Series. And I had no problem if it went that far. But like I said in my prediction, I felt that someone was going to come out and defeat. I really thought it was going to be Paul, Paul Heyman's man, which was Brock Lesnar. But when it came down to it, when Paul Heyman was about to get his face caved in by the kendo stick, we get a Ryback coming out and spearing a CM Punk into a table and cutting his back open. I'm going like, what the fuck? I thought a long time ago, many, many months ago, that the best person for Ryback to have as a manager, when CM Punk was a face at one point with Paul Heyman, would be Paul Heyman. I know in one of my videos many, many months ago, probably last year, I said that Ryback is not good enough to talk. Have a mouthpiece for him, and the only available person there was Paul Heyman. I felt that if CM Punk didn't need Paulie, it would be great to see Paul Heyman with Ryback. Or Paul Heyman with Brad Maddox. I said the same thing. And look what happened when he associated himself with Brad... Brad associated himself with Paul Heyman. He may not be officially a Paul Heyman guy, but he's running Monday Night Raw. Had to say it like Vince. I got it. I'm sorry. But it, it, it makes sense. But what will Ryback say tonight? This is being uploaded pretty late. I'm sorry. I had some stuff I had to do, unfortunately. But when you see this, either Ryback's going to say that he wanted Paul Heyman there because he believed he could make him go somewhere. Or he'll say that, I hate bullies. I didn't want CM Punk to bully you no more. You didn't get treated good. I'll make sure I stop the bully. That's what I think Ryback is going to do. He's going to say because he's been doing this bully shit, which no one liked. He's going to say that I don't like bullies. I'm standing in your corner, Paul Heyman. Or he'll say, I want you as my manager now. One of the two. But still, in the end, it doesn't really matter because having Ryback thrown into the mix will make it all right. I don't really have a problem with it. Now, the question is, what will happen after the feud? Will he go after Brock Lesnar? Yes. But the question is, since Brock is having a limited um, contract where he only does certain amounts during the year, does this mean we're going to see Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series or Brock Lesnar at... Hmm, either Survivor Series, Royal Rumble, or WrestleMania. Maybe one of those three. I don't know, but we'll find out. Now, the next one I'm moving on to is the Divas Fatal 4-Way. AJ, Naomi, mm, Natalia, and Brie Bella. The question here is, why? Why did she win? AJ winning again. Did this actually help the Divas Division? I say no. There's no point in AJ winning that title again. Unless they're going to keep promoting, like I said, Divas against Total Divas. This would be the only reason why they didn't let her lose. Because now they're going to have Oksana, have Alicia Fox. You're going to have a luscious Layla go up against the Total Divas. In some form or fashion, making feuds out of that. That would be the only reason I believe they wouldn't do this. But if that does not happen, what was the point? So a Caitlyn could get a second sh second or third shot at a, a AJ? That would be a waste of my time. And that would make me incredibly angry. The match was actually quite good. The crowd wasn't 100% behind it, but it's not the point. They're, they really did some really good work in the match. And I commend the women for actually doing it. The feud hasn't been promoted very well, but it still was done well. Now, the match that I also don't understand, ADR versus RVD. It wasn't a bad match, but ADR wins by disqualification because he refused to let go of the cross arm breaker. What does this accomplish? Unless this is for Ricardo Rodriguez to get his shot at ADR, and I understand the last SmackDown, they had their conflict. I don't know if it was a match where he just attacked him or something. If this is for ADR to go up against Ricardo Rodriguez and Ricardo gets the title, I would understand this. Or at least get a shot at the title. I would understand it. 
But if this isn't going to lead up to that, or if this is supposed to make a Damien Sandow turn face, or maybe Damien to cash it in and then use it for Cody, that would also make some sense. I didn't get it. I know that's a lot to take in, but I'm seeing it like this. If ADR is supposed to keep the title, but then face RVD again, and then a Damien cashes in, that means Cody Rhodes is going to eventually get his shot at the world title. Because there's no way in hell they're going to keep Cody out and then bring him back in and not go after Damien. That would be stupid. So my guess is that the letting ADR keep the title so Damien can cash in and then Cody can go after Damien. That would be the only reason why. That's what I'm hoping for and I'm just going to go from there. Now, um, let me see. Did I forget anything, ladies and gentlemen? I did the Dolph. I did the ADR. I did the Divas. I did the Kopi. All right, the final match of the night. Daniel Bryan versus the Viper and Orton. I have to make sure I'm in the shot. I hope I'm in the shot. But let, let me put it to you like this. What I thought was that Triple H was going to have some shenanigans. But when he said early in the night that no one was going to interfere in the match, I thought they were really going to put Daniel Bryan over. Even if he doesn't win, he's going to be put over by the Breakfast Club. And I was right. When you see the video package of a Triple H saying, I'm going to do whatever is best for business, that made me think that Triple H is putting Daniel Bryan over properly. He's making sure that Daniel Bryan is going to be in the Breakfast Club in a nice, prominent spot. Does that mean he's going to be over a John Cena? No, but he will be in a prominent spot under a Randy Orton. He will be. Well under a Randy Orton. But the match was very good. Randy did great work with Daniel Bryan. He put him over very well. And in the end, Daniel Bryan wins the championship and is the champion. The WWE champion of the world, baby. But I expected there'd be some type of shenanigans anyway, even though Triple H said nothing. But when nothing happened, that made me realize something's going to happen on this Raw that's about to happen. I was not disappointed in this. I admit that I would have liked to see Daniel Bryan lose the match and they dragged us a little bit more into Survivor Series, but it does not mean something can't happen into the next pay-per-view, which is Battleground, I believe, like I said earlier. But how do I feel about this show? It was a good show. The crowd was very interested in this. Even the most lowest match, which was Fandango versus Miz, had some level of interest because the crowd wanted tables. It's basically an Illinois. I'm sorry. Michigan. You know how they are. But this is a good B show. I was very happy about this. So that's my rating. And I hope you enjoyed this Zane's view of... <coughs> sorry. It's been crazy weather over here. I've been getting sick. I hope you enjoyed this Zane's view. And subscribe and comment to my channel, ladies and gentlemen. I really want some, some comments on this. Especially now that you can't do video responses. I, I'm hoping people will still see me, which I believe they will. And I hope you have a good night. And watch out for my Raw review tomorrow. Have a good day, ladies and gentlemen.